first couple of years, not that many people talked about Robert Sala. If anything, he was kind of taking some shit. And last year, he went from the guy that everyone wanted to interview. And it's pretty clear on paper their defense is going to be pretty good again. And we did something – a couple of days yesterday on Robert Sala, is he a lock to become a head coach next year? And it feels like he's got a lot of momentum coming into the season. We'll see a lot of variables. You never know what jobs. And he's on the, maybe on the wrong side of the ball, but just being around him, I know your partner, Tim Ryan's close buddy with him. What, what you think about yeah. Robert Sala? What you thought about him going in and then a year around him, what you think? Well, I, I thought he was uh, unjustly criticized because there was a lack of talent. There yeah. was a lack of a pass rush. And that exposed the secondary. But um, they do believe in this cover three system. And Kyle believes in it. And that's the one thing I wanted to get into with Kyle to more. Uh, and hopefully this season we'll get into it more. Is just why he so firmly believes that's the way to play defensive football. You're not going to play every snap that way. But it, they, they play a lot of snaps with that basic shell. Uh, and, you know, he was around uh, – Tampa Bay and John and Monty Kiffin and the cover two. And I think the cover three is an evolution of that, but they, they firmly believe when Kyle picked what defense he wanted to run, that's what he chose. And as an offensive play caller, that defense probably gives him trouble. There's, there's concepts and fundamental guidelines they have to adhere to. So I thought Sala was basically executing a defensive philosophy that is a proven winner in the NFL. We saw it with Seattle and what they were able to do. Now there are rules in that defense that can be exploited. Like in a cover Lost. three, the weak side linebacker has got to take number three when you go to a three by one formation and that slot corner. And I saw teams pick on the 49ers repeatedly, not last year, but years past where, uh, whether it was Reuben Foster or some other weak side linebacker has to cover a slot receiver and like, can you get out of that concept? That does not work. And they got trapped a couple of times and they, you know, in the Super Bowl, when it was two, three chip jet wasp, what was that? That was, we're attacking the concept and we're going to, we're going to put a player in a crisis position here. And I, I, you know, Manuel Mosley got caught, but I don't, you know, maybe how do you, how do you blame did, him? He thinks you're going to throw it at the six. He breaks up. I mean, it's I hard. I think that's instincts. I mean, good offensive play calling puts defensive uh, individuals into a crisis where they have to make a decision. Yeah. And uh, it may it may seem like the wrong one, and you're probably schooled. But when you're in the middle of the Super Bowl and you see Sammy Watkins going to that shallow area, what are you going to do? Just drop him and follow Tyreek? Well, you know, it, it, there's a moment where you're going to have to make a decision, and that's what that does. So, but I think that's just the concept of a zone defense is where we're all moving together like an accordion. You know, we're all, you know, we're not, we're Al Davis hated his own defense because he never wanted that, that crisis. He wanted, I'm, I'm guarding, I'm going to cover you and I'm on your ass and you're my man and that's it. Well, then there's ways to, you know, with chips and there's ways to rubs and, and bunches and we can, we can exploit that. But anyway, with Salah, I thought before I had to meet him and observe him closely, I thought he was a young coach who had a, had a concept of how he wanted to play, and the numbers were awful because he did not have a pass rush. Well, you go out and you, and you make a trade to get D Ford, and then you draft Nick Bosa. We solved that problem. We got, <laughs> we got a state-of-the-art pass rush, and D wasn't on the field enough at the time. And, uh, and, and, Ar and Armstead was ready to get paid and ball out too. Armstead, Buckner, and all of it. It all came yeah. together, yes without question. And then an occasional, you know, linebacker blitz or a cat blitz off the slot. Uh, and now Akella Witherspoon's a much better player. And uh, we got Richard Sherman in the second year off the Achilles. He's a much better player. We got Jimmy Ward, not in the hospital ward, but he's Jimmy <laughs> Ward. So now it all, you know, it all works together. So now you've got a concept. And then being around him and because of my relationship, obviously with Tim Ryan and Tim's close relationship with Robert Sala. They're buddies. They play golf all the time. I, I probably chatted with him more than any coach uh, because he's accessible at times, but he's a, he's the highest quality individual. He's not, uh, you know, he's a tough man. And ultimately this is a force game and bringing Kacerik in and wide nine and, you know, hair on fire. And we're getting up the field and it's football, but there's a, 
to your point about Salah as a head coach, you know, a lot of defensive coaches can't translate to head coaches like like Rex Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> I think Salah will 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 be am- amazingly poignant, compassionate. compassionate. Yeah, I think he yeah. will. And I think you know, Gary St. Jean uses the term when you're a a coach or a GM, you have to coach up to your owner and your GM, and then you got to coach down to your players and your fan or your fan base. So there's a lot of different uh, people judge coaches by how they talk to the media, like Harbaugh. I don't care, but people do care and the owner cares and you can't necessarily talk to your, uh, your players. Like you talk to the owner, the owner's not going to tolerate that. You got to explain things differently to your owner. So I think Robert Sala, you know, when he does get this opportunity, hopefully the 49er defense will be strong in 2020 as it was in 19. And he's still viewed as a hot commodity because I think it's hard for coaches, for owners, the people that make the hire to differentiate, you know, defensive minds. It's easier to to evaluate offensive guys. Uh, So I think, uh, yeah, I think he will be a guy who will be considered of that. But as far as watching him as a coordinator, he had better ingredients to work with. Now, and also I think that they, they got away from, it wasn't all covered three snaps. Uh, They mixed in a lot more man. I think, you know, when it's third down and uh, three, maybe four or less, they, they played man defense on third. You can't play a zone defense and retreat on that, those situations. you got to stop the first down. So you got to play more man. So there were situations, and I think the stats back that up, uh, that he, he, he varied things more. And I think they will vary things more this year and how they're going to use Jimmy Ward. So my opinion didn't change much of Salah. I thought he was an interesting guy <clears throat> observing him before. And I, I, that's even more so. I think he's, uh, he's the kind of guy, uh, he's more the CEO football coach kind of guy. I think he's uh, on every level, he would be impressive. Not just, you know, let's put on the tape and we're going to talk detailed football. Let's try to, you know, get after Solomon Thomas here and get him to unlock that ferocity in him. So there's all different elements. There's the, there's the challenging, you know, traditional defensive football coach. There's the cerebral, uh, what do they call him, Gandhi around the building. I mean, Tony Dungy. I, I call Tony Dungy Gandhi a lot because I think there's that, first of all, there's the likeness. And then there's the, the compassionate side where sometimes you have to appeal this to guys' manhood. But yeah. some of these guys are smart. It's like, why? Why would I do that? Why? It's not just, you have to do that, and that's the way we do it. Yeah. It's, well, why? Is that really effective, Coach? I mean, some of these guys are smart guys. And Dominic Su has that dichotomy, uh, dichotomy in his brain where he's like this badass kicking guys on Thanksgiving morning, and what's wrong with this man? He's a savage. And then you listen to him speak, and, you know, he's Warren Buffett. So <laughs> yeah. you're like, what's going on here? So, uh, I, you know, the, a guy like Solomon Thomas, I think both sides of it, maybe Kacerik's, ferocity and tenacity appeals to him. And then Robert Salas got got that side as well, but he's also got a highly intellectual uh, thought process to appeal to to different players. So I think he's got, he's got the whole package. There's no doubt he's got the whole package.